Hi everybody, it's Mary from Growing Puppies. And I had a number of questions come to me um, today about puppy care, and I did send uh, links to some of the videos I've made, but I thought I would address some of these questions specifically since they may not be specifically addressed in my videos. So I'm just gonna read the um, emails as they came to me and answer them as we go. So the first question is whether or not you should keep a cage, um, your the cage in the pen, um, and I think she meant when she said cage, I think she meant the crate, in the pen in early puppy life or keep it nearby. So we actually don't call it a cage, we call it a crate, a wire crate. And um, what I have is, um, well, let me just grab one here. Um, so this is a carrier. This is the kind of car soft side carrier that you put on an airplane. And a person could use one of these, but they're kind of a more, um, better for travel because the puppy will end up chewing on it. But it could work if you had one that you did fly with your puppy and weren't using it um, otherwise. But I have some that are the hard shell airline crates um, that I use. And I also have the wire crate. So basically, I like to put something in the pen, like when those puppies are about five to six weeks old, I will put a, a hard shell uh, carrier in there because they're kind of den-like and the puppy can go in there and just start developing this um, den, keep that den-like, um, I guess, uh, instinct, uh, which is then useful because they like to be in these small, small areas which is useful later on because if you have to travel with your puppy or stay at a hotel or, um, or if the plumber comes over and you need to put your puppy up um, or guests, it's good that you, your puppy likes being in a little confinement space. Um, my dogs sleep in their crates every night and Angel actually goes down to her cage on her own all the time, her little wire crate. She's sleeping in that throughout the day. We just leave the doors open and she just loves that, that thing. So, um, so that's useful, that's very helpful. I always know when I leave the house or, um, or you know, if someone's coming over, I know my dogs are, are gonna be controlled and not you know, bothering people or, or running out the door. Um, so uh, you don't have to keep it in their, their pen. Uh, like I have lots of uh, carriers because obviously I have a lot of puppies in my life. Um, so I have that ability to have one that I keep next to my bed, a little carrier, and I have one that I'll move around the house, you know, when I'm sitting at the computer or working in the kitchen making dinner. Um, but when they're first little, and when they're very little, those first few weeks, it's not a bad idea to put one in their pen with them so that they're getting used to both the pen and the carrier at the same time. So that's why I use them here, and so that when they go home to you, they're already familiar with it, and that will help make it a little easier for you as well. Also, if they have to drive home in a, in a carrier or fly home in a carrier on the airplane, that's why I do it. That's specifically to help that. Um, okay, so here, um, the number of options of puppy pads has my head spinning, um, especially if I should keep one in the pen with a puppy. Should I have one in the pen and one closer to the door? Um, I have a deck, which is another option for placement, and the washable ones, are these a good thing? Okay, so, what I do use pee pads. I have one lining the puppy's pen, and I'm actually sitting in the pen right now, and I think I'll pick up a puppy so you can have something to look at other than me. <laughs> so I keep pee pads in the, the pen, um, and it's not for the puppies to pee on. I, I, I'll put a little um, a litter box in here, but it's for those puppies that occasionally will miss the mark, not make it all the way to the, to the um, litter box. Then they ha if they pee on the floor, it's going to absorb it and the puppies aren't gonna be walking through it. Um, as far as, there, so there's plastic pee pads and there's these reusable washable pee pads. Of course, I use reusable washable pee pads as liners in their pen because they're much bigger. And so regular pee pads are much smaller and they're, they're really very different um, items. I mean, they're completely different. Um, 
the, these little plastic pee pads are limited in how big they are. Here's one here that I wanted to show you. They're not that big. They don't cover the whole pen. And the other problem with these plastic pee pads is that the puppies reach a certain age, like usually around three weeks, and they'll be chewing those up. And so that, that's when I stop using them. Before that time, I'll, I'll use them to catch little accidents that the puppies miss. Um, I'll put these plastic ones on, underneath their, um, their, uh, their litter boxes and stuff like that. But, um, but as soon as they start messing with them, I don't, don't use them anymore. Um, so basically that's, if you do use these, once you take them home, you really do need to have some kind of a, uh, pee pad holder, which holds them in place. Cause otherwise the puppy's going to chew them up. So the, when do I recommend you get a pee pad? When you're traveling, then you can put them on the floor. Okay. So I use them when I go to the airport, I'll put a pee pad on the floor in the bathroom, put a little bit of the pellets, just a little small handful on it to give it the right smell. And then the puppies will use the pee pad there in the, in the, um, in the bathroom. And then I just throw it in the garbage and we're done. Um, I also, you'll use them driving in a car. If the puppy needs to go pee, I don't take the time to tur turn off the road and go to one of those rest areas. No, because by the time we got there, the puppy will have already messed on my lap. Uh, plus, if you take them out, they will be too distracted and they won't use the potty out there with all the commotion in this new place. Better just to put a pee pad on the floor of your car, put the puppy down on it when it squirms and needs to go, then pick up the puppy, put the pee pad in a garbage bag and put a new fresh one down in case he needs to do number two. But so that's how I use pee pads, really more in controlled situations. Um, at, and after eight weeks, uh, except for traveling, I don't really even use pee pads myself. So, um, I mean the plastic pee pads. I do definitely use the, um, the washable pee pads. And so you probably could get two of them put one on the floor of your, of your puppy pen. And then if the puppy has an accident, you can throw that one in the wash. And then, um, and then you have a fresh one to put down. So I have three pee pads for each pen because one, every day they get washed. And so one goes in the washing machine and then the other one is a, is a backup. And then one goes on the floor and is clean. And while, um, and then after the one comes out of the washing machine, I have another day to uh, let it dry naturally. Um, and so this way I have three in rotation for each pen. So that's how I use them. You won't need as many as that. Your puppy won't actually probably have too many accidents at all on his pen, be in his pen because he'll be using the litter box pretty, pretty quickly. So um, if you wanted to go the inexpensive direction, you could get a, a shower curtain liner from the Dollar Tree, put a, a, some sort of a thin blanket or sheet over top of that, um, and that and then that will absorb anything, and the liner will keep it um, keep it from hitting your floor. Um, so yeah, it's up to you what you want to do. I do I do really like these washable pee pads though for myself, and of course uh, they last years and years and years. I have the very first. <laughs> I've been breeding dogs for over 12 years and I still have the same pee pads that I used in that very first litter. So <laughs> that's a testament to the quality. Um, so let's see, what's the other questions? So I guess the answer to the question is you um, only need pee pads temporarily, but you, on the plastic ones, but you will need uh, something washable to use on the floor of your pen, not for going potty. Um, you, unless you, again, you will want to put the a pee pad underneath your litter tray. Or, so I would get a washable one to put underneath your litter tray if you're using a litter tray um, near your apartment. Okay, in your apartment. So, okay, dog tag and microchip. Um, okay, so let me explain the microchip. I'll pick up a little sample puppy for that. This is a little pink puppy. They put the microchip with a needle just between the shoulder blades here. And that microchip that your puppy has will be registered in my name. It, all the puppies will be registered in my name. And then when you go home, I give you the code that you will need to go on the computer and register the microchip in your name. And I can do that as well. I'll 
on your behalf, but I want you to do it to make sure that I put the right name in, which I won't know what you're naming your puppy and your correct address, everything. So I just let you do that. Um, and I might prompt you, if you don't do it within a few days, I might come back and remind you because honestly, the, if you don't put it in your name, it's not helping you much. <laughs> and we, we, the reason to have a microchip is in case you puppy somehow gets lost or stolen. Um, so here's the thing, don't rely on the microchip. I mean, if your dog gets lost in the neighborhood, somebody's not gonna have your name and they would have to take the puppy to the vet and ask the puppies to be scanned. It's better to have a tag as well. So do use a regular tag with your address on so that anybody in the neighborhood or, or wherever you are can immediately reach you on your cell phone and because people don't have microchip scanners, only the veterinary offices do. So, um, so that's what you need to know about the microchip. Um, there is no, there's also, there's no cost to you for registration. That's a good thing to know. Um, I'll take care of all those costs. Okay. Um, let's see what else. Oh, there is no certificate. I will just give you a little tag with the code so that you can uh, get, so you can access your particular um, registration information. Okay. Uh, let's see. And then let's see, I guess that's everything. Here's another question from another customer. What are you giving your dog food to eat? There was some conflicting information on the website. I'm giving Purina Pro Plan. That is because that's what my vet recommends and I'm going to give my litters what my vet recommends that will be agreeable to all the vets out there. It is not my personal favorite food, but it is more a mid-range food that, that everybody would be able to afford. Um, personally, ideally, I think a human grade food is better regulated and it's gonna keep that uh, your dog food will be held under greater scrutiny. If it's a feed grade food, which a Purina Pro Plan is, um, there's less oversight. The, the FDA doesn't oversight it the same as with the human grade food. And so the results are, you know, there's some dog food companies that are under lawsuit right now because they had all kinds of things, even dog DNA in the dog food. So anyway, I'm not an expert on dog food. I just know, <laughs> I just know what I don't like, and I supplement with a, a human grade food. I like the small batch because it comes dehydrated, and I supplement my kibble with that um, to try to boost its nutritional value. I also add human additives. I I use like real chicken. I'll I'll treat treat my dogs with real chicken um, and other vegetables and things that we have. Um, from our own table. I don't I don't do casseroles or anything like that. It's all pure food that I know what it is. I'm not going to give them onions. I'm not going to give them garlic. I'm going to give them stuff that is recommended for dogs and I'm very intentional about what I give them. But I also I'm careful that it's not too high a percentage that I'm mis mix messing up the percentage of um, of what they need. They need a certain amount of calcium. They need to have low fat diets. They do need to have a certain amount of organ and liver, liver in their, you know, food. Um, so that's why you, you know, if you're going to do a homemade diet, you really have to research that properly. And just no, going to the internet, just getting a recipe off the internet does not constitute researching it properly. You have to get it from somebody who has intentionally um, made the recipe to include calcium. Maybe they'll you'll have bone meal in it or something. You know, sprinkle that in the food, but. You have to really do it the right way to get your balance because otherwise they'll have um, deficiencies your dogs but again if you just are supplementing with this you know certain, a small percentage like 20 percent or something it's not going to be bad all right so this puppy wanted to be picked up let's see who else is there okay they're all sleeping um okay so this person also asked our puppy will be in a small pen on the main floor during the day to start which is good at night, she will sleep upstairs. How do you recommend the setup for that? Um, so, you can do two things. You can put 
a pen up there, but then you need to have a second pen. You'd have to have a pen downstairs and you have to have a pen up near your bed. So if there's some way you can easily, uh, what I have done, rather than set up a pen, you can put a, a if there's a bathroom, that's like, in, with my master bathroom, I have a master bath and I sometimes have enclosed or put a little gate across the bathroom door so the puppy can have its bed in there and its potty tray right there. But that, I think I may have done that once. In general, I just like to, if it's winter and the weather's bad, then I'll just, um, get up at night, actually I, I think I do this pretty much all the time, I don't know. I get up at night when the puppy rustles about and just put it on the potty tray. It goes potty real fast, I put it back in his pen and that's it. So I do get up when I hear the puppy um, is sort of rustling next to me. Um, if you plan to, to put your puppy next to your kid's bed, the puppy may end up peeing in its bed because it wouldn't be able to get out of its pen. And so if you're putting in your kid's room, what personally, you know, I have kids too. I don't put the puppy in their room. I put it in my room. It doesn't bother my husband because they don't, they don't make any noise really. I just hear them just like, I just hear a slight movement and I'm, uh, I'm listening for it. I wake up and then I take care of it and then they don't make any noise because I put them right back in. Um, you can take them outside if the weather's nice and in in, you have a well-lit area. You can just take them directly outside if you're really going to be you know, uh, gung-ho about your outdoor potty training. Personally, I just think it's not a big deal to put them on their litter tray um, for it, the, the whole waking up at night thing. Some people don't have it at all. Sometimes it only lasts a few weeks and usually it, it does not last very long before they aren't making any noise at night and they sleep right through to the day. So it's a very temporary time that they'll be doing that. Some of the puppies that go home a few weeks older won't do it at all. They won't need to get up at all. So um, there, of course, if you follow the schedule and you pick up the food and water at the time that they say to, that will also help. If you're giving your puppy food, to, uh, food or water too late in the day, that will create problems. So um, another important thing to note is that if your puppy is waking up more than once in the night, and then something's wrong. I had one customer where that, they were like, my puppy's waking up all night long. And I'm like, that's so weird. I'm sorry, the light's going funny here. Um, this never happened to me before. It turned out that she wasn't feeding her puppy enough. She messed up on the schedule. She was supposed to feed a quarter cup four times a day and she fed a quarter cup per day. So that's another thing. Make sure your puppies are eating whatever they can eat, as much as they can eat during the meal time. If, you give them a quarter cup and they're, they are finished that right up. Don't be afraid to give them a little more. Sometimes they need more than what the recommended amount might be. And sometimes they need a little less, but just keep an eye that they're eating something at mealtime. And again, if they're, you give them a specific period to eat their food, if they gobble it all up and can eat more, well, they might be going through a gross spurt. So don't worry about it. They eat a little more than is on the recommended um, amount. That's just like a ballpark of, of how much they may be eating. But every puppy is different and every puppy has a different activity level and growth rate. So, okay, so what else? Um, so, is there anything else here? I think that's everything. Um, this person also has questions about a potty patch. Those are very good uh, because they're closely most closely mimic your, your outdoors. Um, you don't have to do a potty patch for those of you who don't want to. Um, most people don't just because the it's more cost effective just to use a litter box. Um, so it's completely up to you. People who have used it have really liked it. Um, um, and so, but on the way home, um, if it's only a two hour trip, chances are you won't even need to use the, the pee pads on the floor but I described in that other question how to uh, use pee pads when you're driving. And there's also a video about that as well. So yeah, these are all the questions for today. And if anyone has more questions that if you've looked through the videos and you either there's a video that you don't think is, you know, answered the question very well or you have more questions, let me know because some of these videos 
I, I sort of did, you know, to answer some questions and didn't really have the full, like for instance, um, I need to redo the video on puppy biting. I will do that before your puppies go home because there's a lot more information I want to talk about that occurred to me after the fact that I really would be good to add because I've looked at all these puppy videos um, on puppy biting and I find that they're all deficient because they don't tell you what to expect at what age and that's what I think is really important and what I want to address in my video is what you can expect at, at different ages because how you address puppy biting does change based on how old your puppy is. So anyway, we'll get to that on another video and be sure to keep, um, and, you know, uh, what's it called, subscribe or if you're one of my customers, look out for another video coming on puppy biting and again, and uh, ask me any of the questions that you need and I'll put out another video for next week. So take care and we look forward to hearing from you and don't be afraid to ask questions. I'll talk to you later, bye.